Good afternoon. At this time, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. City Clerk, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Present. Commissioner Burbank. Present. Commissioner Colwell. Here. Commissioner Dodie Lee. Here. Commissioner McCool. Here. Vice Mayor Bradford. Here. And Mayor Vila. Here. Can we please stand for the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, at this time, we're going to go ahead and move to Section 4A. This is a public hearing to hear and consider comments and questions regarding the city's tentative millage rate and proposed annual budget for the coming fiscal year 2023-2024. The city of Deltona hereby pro proposes a tentative millage rate of 7.35. The tentative millage rate reflects an 8.86% increase from the rollback rate of 6.7519 mills. The tentative millage rate is higher than the rollback rate of 6.7519 in order to cover increased operating costs. The floor is now open to hear public comments and to take any questions from the public. Okay, Mayor, there are three public comments. Janice Morgan, then Nyland Morgan, and Stephanie Cox. Janice Morgan, please. Which one of you would like to speak? Uh, right. Jan I have Janice signed up as well, your sister. No? Okay. All right. No problem. We are allowed to um, ask questions, correct? Mm -hmm. So you, you can ask questions, but we... We won't respond until we'll we'll, note, we'll take notes and then we'll try to get back to you if you leave your contact information with the city clerk. But I can voice my concerns, correct? Sure, of course. Okay, absolutely. my concerns here as a homeowner: uh, the roads are terrible. We're constantly going up on uh, tax rates high for homeowners. Um, For some un re unforeseen reason, a lot of people cannot afford those tax high rates because of the simple facts of inflation. And if we're going to be building all of these homes in Volusia County, well, speaking of Deltona, where are the nice roads? You get off of I-4, you into a two-lane, and you ride there... Um, I've been here only three years and I'm planning on um, selling my home because of there's nothing here. If I want to do something extravagant with my family, I have to go to Orlando, which is another county, or to Daytona, where there is bigger and better things. We don't have anything here in Deltona to say why homeowners' um, taxes are constantly going up and then the road as well. You get off of I-4, there's a congestion right there. Eventually, it's going to have to be expanded because there's just so many people moving here. So that's my concern. A lot of people will be losing their homes, walking away from their homes, and the American dream is not to own a home in the United States because there are so many tax hikes going up and uh, consumers, homeowners, are not even getting the actual wave to cover those heights. So it needs to be looked at and give us something what we're going to be paying our money for. We're, we're not getting nothing here. We have to go other places to nice restaurants, nice clubbing. We don't have a shopping mall. What shopping mall here is other than um, Coles on the other side? And I Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie Cox, please. Good evening, everybody. It's been a while since I've been here. I spoke to a couple of you on the way in. We need this full rollback. Not everybody can afford any increases. We need amenities, but somebody has to stop somewhere. I know there's places to cut in that budget, 
if I can cut my budget back on my fixed income, you certainly can cut back on yours. There's a lot of waste in within the government here, within the city, and we need to pull on our big panties and do the full rollback. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn Hickerson, please. Um, Carolyn Tallwood Avenue. Um, I'm for this rollback too. And I wore my wish shirt tonight because I'm making a wish that you'll hear us. Um, I've had to cut out of my fixed income of Social Security that I live on. I've had to cut out my cable. I've had to cut out, um, cut back on my food bill. I've had to cut out um, some other things that, you know, were not necessities, but because I'm on a fixed income. Um, I put a little thing in my car so it says I'm a good driver and I get $300 off on my driving each year um, if I'm a good driver. So they constantly monitoring my braking and my driving so that I could get a bigger discount. I've done everything I can do on my part to tighten my belt. $1,800 a month is not a lot for a widow. And I have, fortunately, my house paid for. But if these taxes go up, I'm very concerned that I'll lose my house to a tax sale because I won't be able to afford the taxes. And I'm concerned about that. I just don't, I just don't think that, you know, the seniors in our community should have to suffer so much if y'all can't find ways to be fiscally responsible and help us out. Find out where you can tighten your belt. We, we're doing our job to tighten our belt. I'm not getting a cost of living increase. You know, you guys are proposing a cost of living increase across the board, I learned tonight. Um, that is like a kick in the teeth, isn't it? Do you know, where, where's, where's it coming for me to make my ends, my ends meet? I only have so many dollars in a month, and when they're gone, they're gone. And uh, I just need you guys to be on our side and find out where you can make some cuts, some deep cuts, to help us out too. Thank you. Thank you. Gloria Ford, please. District 1. Um, I'm here to address, I think, I feel we need to go to the rollback. Our property values have gone up, so by virtue of that alone, our taxes are going to go back, even if we do the rollback with the millage rate. Um, Commissioner Jody Lee said at one meeting, a few meetings back, that our taxes were not going to go up. I remember that. Um, our taxes are going to go back up no matter what. Even if we do the rollback, our taxes are still going up. But if we do it to this rate you want, they're really going to go up. And I know a few people on Social Security disability, they only get $1,000 a month. I know one guy, I actually play bingo with him, and his payments went up $300 a month because of his insurance, the taxes, and now it's going to be even worse. Not just for him, but for a lot of other people. So I hope you guys can consider that when you make this vote. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Bellick, please. Del Tone has got a lot of handicapped people, a lot of elderly people, a lot of people on fixed incomes. Before you go anywhere, think about that. Just think about that. Don't let your mind get what happened last week or this city manager left. Forget all that stuff. Think about the subject at hand now. Elderly, disabled people with low-paying jobs. You got to say it again? Low-paying jobs, okay? If you're not a fireman, you're not a police officer, you're not working in City Hall, you have a low-paying job in Deltona. Let's get to the bottom line here. How could you even think about raising some? Think about what you have. Think about the residents. Low-paying jobs. Disabled people, elderly people. And you want to raise taxes on them? 
They can't get by now. You see the inflation? You see the prices of everything? Put a gallon of gas in your mind. Can you possibly do that? Huh? Can you possibly think of that? Can you think of the people? I mean, you come up here, everything you do is cold and callous. It's against the residents. I wish the residents would leave. Leave us here by yourself. That's what you deserve. Think of them. Low paying jobs, fixed incomes, poorest fixed incomes. And like I said, if you don't work for the police department, the fire department, or city hall, you have a low paying job. People have to raise families on low paying jobs. The big time saver was coming. Amazon, this saved nobody. Who did it save? Saved a lot of people, got a lot of people from other uh, 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 cities jobs. Didn't help nobody here. Who did it help? I know people who work for Amazon, they're always looking to borrow 10 or $20 for gas. This is what you have gotta think of. You gotta get in the real world. You want people, how do you want people to advise you? Thank you, Mr. Buck. Elizabeth Chavez, please. Elizabeth Chavez, um, Algonquin Avenue, Deltona. So a few years back, I remember that it was less than what it is now, and you guys were talking about how it really wasn't going up. And you explained that in a way in which you were leaving it at the, at the current millage and it was still the same as last year's millage, and it had gone up already then. So I understand that there's every city, every city has veterans, every city all over the world have people that are on low income. Every city has people that are struggling. We are not the only city. I understand that we wanna go forward there might be some development you guys are still trying to do, right? So there's a cap to this millage and we can't go further than that. And it's for infrastructure or, you know, what about, right now I have a friend, she wants to move out of her home. Her husband got sick, his leg got amputated and he died. And she's thinking of selling her home and moving out of Deltona, okay, because Portland gets flooded. So if the money that we're raising, raising up on my millage goes to where it should go, then maybe we wouldn't have an issue with that. Taxes for everybody is different in their homes. Um, different variables go into that, and that's why somebody could be paying $5,000 in taxes versus someone paying 2,000, or even in their insurance to their home. And I understand there are veterans in every city, and I understand also there's homelessness in every city in America. But if you guys come together and kind of hold off on this, because we just had a city manager that just left us. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Mayor, this ends public comment. <clears throat> All right, we're closing public participation. If there's any questions or comments from city commission, I will hear that now. Vice Mayor. Oh, Commissioner Jody Lee. Yeah, I just I was looking at all this and at the millage rate and everything, and I know how things are going up, and it's it's hurting people. I get it. People say things, but we all live in a city too, and we pay taxes. The current millage rate at right now is seven point six. We're lowering it a little bit to 7.3, or that's what we're going to be voting on. That's a little bit less than what it is currently. We're not raising it. We just stopped not too long ago the uh, a rate increase for the stormwater. We voted down a rate increase for solid waste. We're starting to trim different things, and we're getting more work done. We're getting streets done. We're getting different sewer projects done. We're getting a lot done in the city. It's hurting us all. We can't control, the one thing you have to realize, we can't control the hospital authority, the school board authority, the county. We can't control if they raise things. We have no control over that. The only thing we have control right now is the city. Our millage rate right now is currently 7.6. 7. So 
What we're going to vote on is lowering it a little bit, not a full rollback, but it's lower than what it is last year. I would, I would love to do a full rollback, but the problem is it's not feasible for our city, in my opinion. Everybody up here is entitled to what they believe, but people had bought the house, their house 20 years ago. They're paying low taxes. The house was valued a lot less back then. You buy a house last year, it's valued, when it was first built, it was $60,000. Now it's $360,000. You're paying taxes on that three sixty. That's why some people have really cheap insurance and taxes. You know, the in people talk about insurance. We have no control over that. Homeowner's insurance, we have no control over that. Driver's license insurance, car insurance, we have no control over that. Everything we're talking about now is we're going to be voting on lowering it a little bit from what it was last year. So we're trying to cut costs. There's a lot of stuff we can do in the city to cut costs. We're working on it. But Rome wasn't built in a day. That's all. Thank you, Vice Mayor Bradford, then Commissioner Burbank, then Commissioner McCool. I think one of the hardest things is individuals out not having information. And what we're looking at just as a informational for everybody is as Commissioner Jody Lee said, because we didn't do the stormwater special assessment, we didn't do the solid waste, we're now taking funds, again, out of the general fund to transfer over to cover these. This budget is on the website. It's clear for individuals to see. You know, right now, we're bringing down our actual general fund to cover the shortfalls now from solid waste and stormwater. We, this budget, the way it is, we're still having to transfer money out, which is going to put a major charge on staff to try to cut spending out of what's already approved. Just and that that could entail losing special items that we may have already approved. It, it could mean that an event that we said, hey, we want to have this added to this year's budget. Guess what? It could be taken out because. With this, even with this, we're still having to transfer money over from our general fund. And if we do that this year, we do that next year. It's just like a homeowner. A homeowner has a savings account. You don't want to keep depleting your savings account to cover the shortfall. And, and we can't continue to do that, because if we continue to do that, the city's rating goes down. If the city's rating goes down, that affects our bonds, that affects the rates, then you are gonna have an increase. And I know it's really hard to understand, because trust us, I don't, I don't want a tax increase. I don't wanna pay more taxes. But when I look at actual numbers, which I don't know if they have them back there or what, it, it's difficult to not go all the way back to rollback, and I think this was a decent compromise to that spot. You know, what I'm gonna charge staff at now is you, you can't, you gotta figure out how we're not gonna, we'll cover that on the next item, but how are we not gonna transfer money out of our general fund to try to cover all these items? Well, we don't have a choice, but now you need to cut somewhere else to lessen the amount of money coming out of the general fund. You know, so by not doing the stormwater and the solid waste, I mean, we're looking at major transfers of over $2 million, I believe it is, just to cover those shortfalls. You know, so it was great that we didn't raise it, but that money still had to come from somewhere. So now we're jeopardizing that come next year, we're five million short in the general fund. And if we keep doing this, it's gonna go shorter and shorter and shorter than what happens. I, I move to adopt resolution number 2023-40. The interim city manager has the authority to correct Scriv Scrivener's errors and the like. Second. By Vice Mayor Bradford, a second by Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Commissioner Burbank, you're on the board. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I heard mention of elderly disabled people with low paying jobs. That's me. This is not a us and you, this is us and us. Everything that I've heard from this end of the diocese is absolutely true. We cannot keep kicking this can down the road. We have to put the brakes on it now. We have to sort things out. We have to adopt this budget. And then we have to figure out ways to save money for next year and how to keep going progressively forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And also, um, I'm getting asked by my residents regarding this also, and this is a decrease from the previous uh, tentative millage, I'm sorry, uh, the tentative uh, millage rate. It is a decrease, but I will tell you this. 
I have right now in my district and in another district, we have people whose property is flooding and projects that were going to be done with the special assessment are now going to fall over into the general fund because I think that what happens, the misnomer is that we have 100,000 people, call it an even number, in this city. And it looks like dollar signs that we have 100,000 people in the city, but we do not because we do not have equal property value tax paying into our general fund. We just don't have it. So as other commissioners have talked about, when you look at the county taxes, when you look at uh, hospital authority, when you look at education taxes, we all suffer from this. I, it's not, a, again, us against them because I'm a resident too and pay property taxes as well. And I, I hope that with the same vigor that the city is being tasked with tightening their belts that Tallahassee is also stormed because of the lack of insurance um, provisions that, is, uh, that the state has taken. So take, I would say, I take my rancor to the state also because the state is the one that has failed to do anything about your property insurance taxes or your homeowner's insurance. Take that to the state because that's where the bulk of the money is coming from. This municipality is charged with ensuring the quality, life, and safety of all of our residents, and we must do so with the tax money provided. And we are doing that right now on a budget. As you see, we're going to now have to move money over because we have projects that need to be done, stormwater and flooding, and it's not due to waste of money. It's due that we have that, that many issues in the city of Deltona. So I would... I would ask you, I'll, I'm, my door is always open. If you would like to come and sit down and go over the budget I am offering, bring your sandwich and we will sit down in my office and do it. Because I, for one, am not trying to, um, I am not trying to put my people in the poor house. I'm trying to balance between what the reality is and what we want the reality to be. So I... I, that's why I tell my residents, I vote for this because of that, because I have seen the numbers, because I understand tax structure, because I understand what property value is paying into our general fund, and I would invite you to come down and understand the same thing that, that I understand. So doors open, come and sit with me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> the last thing, I got a couple emails of residents asking me that we're increasing their taxes over like thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, I actually pulled up, as residents here know, I'm a renter, so I get no exemptions where I live. So the person I rent from passes the taxes down to me, which that's the way it works. So I pulled up the tax rate or the tax for Deltona for last year, and in my house we paid $1,258.68. With the proposed tax rate that we're, we're reducing, the proposed millage that we're reducing, it's... $1,330.25. It's an increase of $71.57 for somebody like me that has absolutely no exemptions, no hometown heroes, none of that stuff. So we're not, it's not like your taxes are going up thousands of dollars, and I'm not advocating for tax increases as well. But what we are looking at is, are we willing to say we go to full rollback and we got to then stop providing trash services, right? Are we, are we okay with saying, well, capital projects are going to have to be put completely on hold? Those are the things that we have to, we have to look at. So um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and, and, and if we can vote, please. Motion passes 7 to 0. The city of Deltona has adopted a tentative millage rate of 7.35 mills for fiscal year 2023. Dash 2024, the tentative millage rate reflects an 8.86% increased. Read the ordinance, the resolution title. For the one we just did. Yeah. Either you or the attorney, please. Please read the ordinance. You, the resolution. The have resolution. To, you have to read it. I have to read it. I'm sorry. Either you or, or the mayor. One of you have to read it. Just for I the record. Yeah, you have it's one in your yeah, that I can read because yeah. I don't have the Go ahead, Marsha. I will. Just Blaine can give it to me. I only have part of the packet. That's okay. I'll get it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Resolution number 2023-40, a resolution of the City of Deltona, Volusia County, Florida, adopting the tentative levying of Avalorum taxes for Volusia County for fiscal year 2023-2024, providing for an effective date. The City of Deltona has adopted a tentative millage rate of 7.35 mills for fiscal year 2023-2024. The tentative millage rate reflects an 8.86% increase from the rollback rate of 6.7519 mills. This time we're going to go into public hearing resolution number 2023-41. Adopting the tentative annual budget, annual budget for fiscal year 2023-2024. Mayor, we have one public comment. Albert Bryant, please. Hold on. <clears throat> the proposed budget is summarized as follows. General fund 85,311,006. Special revenue funds 48,104, 730. Enterprise Fund, 60959686 Capital Project Funds, 15934963 Total Wide City Budget, $210,310,385. The floor is now open to hear public comments and to take any questions from the public. Please call uh, for public comment. Okay. Albert Bryant, then Kathy Bryant, please. Albert Bryan, you know, I've been doing this a long damn time. And I can honestly say this is the first year at this time of year I don't have a budget. I can honestly say that because what I see in your agenda isn't a budget. It's a summary. It doesn't actually even show anything to discuss. You know, you want us to come discuss stuff with you, but... What, what is there to discuss? I, I, there's no line item there. None whatsoever. This is a joke. You're passing something that no one out here have a clue of what you're passing. Because it's a summary. You call this a budget process? I call this a laughing stock of Volusia County. When you look at what you put in the agenda tonight, it's 10 pages. That's not a budget. How can I compare last year's end of year budget to this year's end of the year budget? I can't. It's not there. That's a joke. But you want to pass something that I can't even read as a citizen. God help you. I feel bad for you, sir. I would resign and run back to public works if I was you, because they're not worth serving. Thank you. Kathy Bryant, please. Kathy Bryant, Deltona. There's usually also on the back table a budget, which you can pick up and go through, but I don't see one this time. Um, I'm, I'm really sad because years past we've discussed the budget and I know the city manager at the time had meetings with all of y'all, but th there's nothing, like, like Mr. Bryan said, there's nothing for us to see. I'm going to echo what everybody else is pretty much saying so far as spending responsibly. And I'm going to give you an example of that. Um, for instance, as you know, we had our roads resurfaced. I'm not complaining. God forbid I'm not complaining. But we had some issues with the road. They came back out. And I had two people, because I said, you know, I was really surprised our road wasn't that bad. And they said, yeah, they said, we're really doing a lot of roads that really don't need it. Well, if I've got a table full of food and somebody doesn't, and you come give me some more food, what, what do I need that for? Give it to somebody who, you know, get, get it to the places where we really, really need it. Look at, I know there was a list of roads and stuff that needed to be done, 
And again, it is not for me to complain, nice to have a nice service and whatever. Um, but then there are things that do need to be done. For instance, I asked to have some trees and other stuff trimmed because you couldn't see pedestrians. We live a block away from the schools. People walk out that time. So I really appreciate my commissioner talking to whoever she needed to talk to, and that got cleared, so now you've got clear visibility, and it's safer. So think about what you're spending money on. There, there's a lot of waste, and that goes, you're right, look at the state, look at the federal government. It goes all the way up, but really think about it. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Chavez, please. Elizabeth Chavez, Deltona. I apologize if <clears throat> I mean talk about something that's not about budget, but we just had a, a city manager that quit 30 days before budget time, and I, I'm wondering <clears throat> if that's the reason why, um, like Gilbert Bryan saying, that there's no information. Um, that's the mess he's left us in, right? Um, and then just a like a request. Um, you guys... I think two meetings, three meetings ago, put budget items in those last items that you talk about sometimes. It's like J through M, um, and there was something approved there. Um, but those are things of budget that are really important. I mean, instead of like putting it like as a B or C or D item, you put it in those. Um, and also, what about, <coughs> you're talking about budget and having to cut somewhere else. What about these projects that are being approved on wetlands and then being resold and you can't really develop there? Are we losing money with that project? Are we losing money with that development? Um, and I hate to be the one to say, remember about the $10 million that we did not fight for? Thank you, Mayor. This ends public comment. Yeah, Vice Mayor Bradford, then Commissioner Jody Lee. Okay, and I just want to clarify, and if I can get staff's clarification on this, FEMA funds, because that's been coming up at a few meetings, FEMA funds have been applied for. They've been applied for for a while. Um, there's been a vicious rumor going around that we never, we never filed for our reimbursement. Those reimbursements have been filed. Do you have a date, Ms. Um, Finance will give us a date when this was filed. I think we were just missing signatures. Yeah. No, it's fine. Okay, yeah. um, Hurricane Ian, the event was on 9-23. It was declared a federal disaster on 9-29-2022. I attended an applicant briefing with FEMA on October 7th, 2022. I filed for FEMA public assistance on October 8th, 2022. FEMA came to visit and meet with uh, city staff for what they call recovery scoping meeting on November 16th. There are currently 17 projects that are in process. We just had two inspectors come out um, last week to um, further um, identify the status of different projects. FEMA reimbursement is a long process. Um, we have the next step. Um, I think the commission has approved the contract. We're waiting for FEMA to obligate it, which means that they will say, this is how much money we're going to give you for the projects. Once FEMA obligates it, it's sent to the Florida um, Department of Emergency Management. They do their um, auditing and they obligate the project. After that, we finally receive the cash to um, reimburse us for the expenditures. Um, it's just, it goes through numerous levels of audit and we're, they are constantly coming back to us for more documentation. Some of the projects are, have not even been completed so we can't get reimbursement for things that are still in process. We have to finish the project, finish spending the money before the final expenditures are sent to FEMA. For Hurricane Nicole, that was a different kind of event because it was not federally declared emergency as a federal disaster area. It was considered an emergency management. So that event was November 7th. It wasn't declared a federal emergency until December 13th. Um, we had an applicant, well, I filed for assistance on December 15th, 2022. The applicant briefing was on January 4th, 2023.
We had the recovery scoping meeting with FEMA here at City Hall on January 23rd, 2023. This is a lot s smaller project. We didn't have nearly, we had almost no debris removal. Um, it was difficult to tell which event caused the flooding because the waters had not even receded. And that was also an issue with Ian, why we had to wait so long to finish projects. There were areas that we had to wait for the water to receive, recede so we can do a damage assessment. So um, um, I worked on both Matthew and Irma and it took numerous years to get reimbursed. We ultimately did, it's just a long process and we're doing everything we can. We're lockstep with FEMA. We have, have not been um, remiss in any of our um, working with FEMA as far as our sending in all our obligations and our expenditures. You, you mentioned when you were speaking about when the feds declared an emergency. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big, like I don't think anybody, not everybody understands the reasoning for that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you can explain at all the difference if, if it's not declared, um, if we don't get that declaration Correct. of a federal emergency, then that limits the funds that we can get. So anything right. that took place before that declaration of emergency, and correct me if I'm wrong, we don't get that reimbursed at the level because it wasn't declared. Is that correct? Can you explain uh, no. that better than me? Um, I think through, as far as um, FEMA is federal, federal money. So um, the, the um, president usually declares a federal disaster. Right. Once it's be, be declared a disaster, um, then we can apply. Then it's like it opens the window for us to go in and apply. But it's retroactive back to the event. Oh, okay. So absolutely we're gonna, um, it's just a. We just can't apply until they declare it. Right, and there was okay. a lot of um, discussion between the state and the feds whether they were gonna declare it or not. It was right on the heels of um, Ian, so. Um, and the storm, depending on where you were in the state, of course, um, where they finally ultimately decided whether Volusia was going to be declared a disaster area or not. Okay. So, do you mind just saying? I got a couple questions. Sure. Um, under this right here, it says general fund, capital projects, fund summary fund. It says under municipal complex, transfer in 5.930 million. Mm -hmm. What is that? And I don't ever remember that being approved by the commission. I think that was for uh, the purchase of land. That's for the purchase of land. That was the five million and um, the difference is 300. And I don't really know off the top of my head how much that was. Okay, because it specifically says municipal complex. That's why Yeah, I'm municipal complex is a fund that we do and it, it's for all the buildings in city hall is you know one of the biggest ones, but it's also for other um, you know, other buildings that the city has. Okay. So, so I have to go back to look at the, the line item to say. Okay. How I just want to verify because I'm just going through this. Mm -hmm. um, also, I mean, obviously, my big concern is we can't we can't take this budget down anymore, right? So, a big concern is, like I said earlier, is transferring so much money from our general fund, and when you look at it this year, and then I'm concerned with what it's gonna be next year and the year after. Um, I'm gonna suggest that if it is not life safety involved, somehow we have got to lessen the amount of money that's being transferred out of that general fund. Like it is detrimental we don't reduce that general fund. And um, you know, some, there's, a, there's a few things that stand out to me. A um, Couple questions is, you know, we have and I'm not picking on Parks and Recs, I'm sorry. But Park and Rec storage, I understand we're removing that. Um, why do we have so much in soccer field repairs? And I don't have to have these answers now, I guess, because I'm throwing a match at the whim. But, you know, and then we have $250 clearing and brush removal at all parks. So is there a way we can do some of these things in waves? Does it have to be done immediately? What can we do? Because obviously doing a transfer like as much like do we have to have the land this year you know is it a number one priority to do this land purchase versus 
transferring $5 million out of our budget. To me personally, I don't think that that is more important than keeping that $5 million in the account. We've had how many hurricanes, and yes, we have funds, we have this fund, we have that fund for emergency backup, but how much does it cost for a hurricane and another hurricane to come back to back? And there's been so many hurricanes this year, I'm just sitting here going, oh my gosh, you know, I feel like we're in a wrecking ball, mm -hmm. dodging some serious havoc that if we got these storms hitting us, we would be in a lot of trouble. And then we're reducing what we have in our savings. So that's what's concerning to me is reducing what we have in our savings. So I'm, I know as a commission, we probably did authorize the purchase of the land for whatever reason. I would suggest we take a really hard look at that and evaluate if that needs to be done this year, unless it's for a project that's life safety. The only thing I would like to add, and I agree with you 100%, um, but the way the charter has, is set up, that we vote on a budget. However, it's a, a living, breathing document, and the commission has the ability to amend it at any time during the year. So, uh, and this is something that we do customarily. We bring budget amendments to you all the time for unforeseen right. things. Um, you know, if the commission wants to change the priorities for the city, they can. We're gonna have a new city manager and working with the city manager and the commission. If you wanna reset the priorities, that can be done. Um, it's because a budget is a projection. It's not absolute numbers. So all, even if something is in the budget, it's gonna come back to you to decide if you wanna go forward with that project or not. So you have, you can either just choose not to spend it, the funds will stay in fund balance, or you can reallocate it to something that within certain parameters, not every fund can be moved from, you know what I mean? And, and I think that you're, you're correct. And I don't think, um, I think at this point, you know, approving this budget is vital. Um, but obviously anything that is on this is going to come back before us, right? Yes, ma'am. So um, at that point we can say yes, no, and, and leave it at that. I'm sorry to interrupt, but yes, ma'am, you're absolutely correct. Anything in the budget, um, you know, that we would typically come back before you, you can always um, vote that down or reject that. Um, and as Mary states, this budget is a fluid document. It's a working document. Um, we, so we uh, definitely will be taking into consideration the stuff that's there and making sure that we are prudent with the money. And um, perfect. Can um, I just address the budget one? online? Yes, is that's what I want to actually mention. That the proposed budget is online. The workshop was held on July 25th. That is, um, the detailed line item is online for all residents to look at. July 25th on that date? Yes. Okay. Every budget for the last 10 years and annual report is online. That is in the finance department. Um, it can be viewed, last year's can be viewed. Um, the proposed budget will have to go into the um, commission area of the website. And um, this year, because of the time was just squeezed so much at the end, we had to just do a summary based on the proposed changes, which were, is online in detail, and the changes that have, were made. And um, hopefully going forward, um, next year we'll have enough time to I have a complete budget, but it's adequate for the state. Um, all the information is there. Every change that we've made to the budget is available to be viewed by the public. Okay, and then once we have this finalized, can we get copies, a copy for the back? Like we usually, I think, have one in each of the boxes. Mm -hmm. So can we just get that like updated for the staff as well? Sure, we can have that available. Okay, is somebody else making a motion? Commissioner, <clears throat> excuse me, Commissioner Jody Lee and then Commissioner McCall. Yeah, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, Ms. Mary, at the same time, sorry, but all the years, one of the residents also brought it up, all the years we have always had the budget books out here. Was there a reason why this year uh, we didn't have budget books out? The budget book, the entire budget book is 300 pages yeah. generally. Um, and that's not completed yet. So um, because it has a lot of different information. It has the demographics of the city, it has statistical information, but 
as far as we need to just get through the trim process right now. So we have to have a budget and a millage rate, which you just voted on, and this is for us to be in compliance with the state. So after this is voted on, we don't put a budget together because it hasn't been voted on yet. So once you vote on it, then we can complete the budget. And um, it usually takes several months, honestly, to put together. We send it to a printer, and it'll be available probably in a couple months. Right. Well, I understand and that. It, I, I yeah. thought there was always different parts of the budget that were out for public to look at. And not, instead of just online, I was, used to always think there was books on the back table where people could look at it. But, that, but that's okay. I, I, I understand that. It has to be before it gets out. Now, there was a thing with Mr. Chisholm. He put in, you wanted, I think he brought back to us before, $5 million for land purchase. If that's already separated in a budget, well, we don't look, sorry, but if it's in, if it's, if it's in there, I mean, use it for shortfalls on something else. How about we just take a break and don't buy some land for a while? I don't think the city should be landlords anyway, but. And that's a decision that the commission That's an extra five million. That's a shortfall for stormwater and trash. That covers the shortages. We had a, I mean, there's a, there's a hurricane fund, there's a f disaster fund. It, it, how much money is in there right now that is not being used? Um, well, the reason that when we gave you the, the information, we gave you the unallocated fund balance because those are restricted for those purposes and it's not available for, to be budgeted. Um, honestly, I don't really know what is, I think the fund balance for the natural disaster is over $9 million. We've spent uh, almost $6 million in recovery for this hurricane. So what the balance is right now, I just don't know off the top of my head, but I can find that. I understand you. some of the balance and some of that money you have to use for emergency funds, but can't some of that money for hurricanes and disaster use for, like we're talking about, raising up Elkham Boulevard? Yes, and in order to do that, because that those funds were restricted by the city commission, the only way it can be unrestricted is by city commission. So you'd have to bring a resolution forward, vote on it, and then that would release those funds for whatever purpose you deem. Okay. I, okay. Anything else? If anybody else, I'm going to. Commissioner McCool and then Vice Mayor Bradford. Make a motion. Thank you. Uh, Mary, the total, what we're going to, like, having to, like, part of the uh, set aside, the $5 million set aside for land acquisition, am I, am I correct that part of that is for stormwater? Uh, mitigation as far as having to do, maybe Glenn, I'm sorry, as far as <laughs> both of you, whatever, but that's what tentatively we had put aside money for also, is that correct? As far as the land acquisition? Oh. Mayor, do you want to? I don't believe so, because that was in the municipal complex fund, uh -huh. and that five million was put in for a different purpose. Okay. Um, stormwater is a separate fund than general fund, so. I, I'm just having a real problem here, like so, not so much with solid waste, because as a municipality, we're going to have to pay it. We can't leave people's garbage, and okay. we are under contract. So <laughs> the, the solid waste fund, whatever. The stormwater fund, I am, I am like, um, I'm concerned about also, because the stormwater assessment that we voted down was going to be for the actual projects to mitigate some of the flooding. The budget that we are currently working on now with stormwater is just about maintenance. There are no projects in there. We had projects cut out. Am I correct in that in saying that? That is correct. Yeah. So just putting this out here, I have residents whose property is currently underwater due to stormwater and to me, this is life and safety and property, and it's been made very clear to me, and I just want to <coughs> say that in as strong a terms as possible that we cannot let that go, un you know, we actually need more money in here for that, but the next year is a different than this year, but I am just preparing for the eventuality. Here's what we do. We kick stuff down the road. We did, we're doing it again this year. By voting down the stormwater and solid waste assessment, we've kicked, we've kicked projects down the road, basically, is what we have done. And we're going to have issues this year and, and into next year regarding stormwater. So 
I just, I don't have a problem. The $5 million for land acquisition, um, I understood the concept to be that part of that was for stormwater mitigation also. So I'm just telling you what my understanding was at one uh, juncture for that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, Mary. I think last meeting we purchased, well, well, I think it got pulled, but there was some land that was going to be purchased for stormwater mitigation. That got pulled. It got pulled. So I don't know if that's what you're thinking. There again, there again it, for st that was for stormwater mitigation. It was. That, that property, which, you know, market bearing what it is, I understand why it was pulled at $50,000, but that is right in a flooded area. So I'm just going to leave that there, you know, uh, the the fifty thousand dollars to bought that property would have mitigated ten million dollars worth of project that's going on, or it, it would have accompanied ten million dollars worth of project going on in that area because it's so badly flooded and poorly drained. So I'm just putting that out there right now because I have residents listening to this because this is their property, and it's easy not to care about it when it's not your property, but it's their property sitting underwater right now. So. Vice Mayor Bradford, then Commissioner Jody Lee, and then Commissioner Vila Vasquez. And, and it was my understanding, I was told that $5 million was for a property for Jim. And if that is the case, that's going to be, have to be put off. So, you know, the stormwater utility is very important. Um, I'll be honest, when it was voted down, I received emails from people saying, so if we didn't show up and our homes are flooded, that means we're the minority and our voices don't matter. And that is not true. But... It, it happened, we can't change that. So we can't change what, other than what we have to right now going into that, other than next year when it comes time for that special assessment, we gotta understand that we gotta do what's right for the whole city. And these, these projects, like $50 million is what is needed to fix all the drainage problems, 50 million. We're, we're far from that. So I move to adopt resolution number 2023-41, the interim city manager has the authority to correct Scrivener errors and the like. Second. second. Third. There is a motion Four. by Vice Mayor Bradford, a second by Commissioner McCool. Commissioner Vila Vasquez, you're still on the board. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I have a question, just, you know, listening to all the concerns and stuff about the funds being spent here and there. Um, interim city manager, it's my understanding that we approved this budget, but at any time, any point, you can use right. funds from anywhere for emergency. Am I correct? Um, not necessarily. It just depends on what fund it's in. The general fund you can, but, but the restricted funds, you would have to release the re restriction on those funds. But the other enterprise fund and the stormwater fund, no. Okay. And I would like to make one quick point, if I may. Thank you. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. But uh, also um, with this budget that was presented, just, just for everyone's note, and I, Mary, I think she was going to mention it, but uh, this budget is 2% lower than last year in the general fund. Just to let you know. Before we uh, start with the vote, can I please have the city attorney read the title of the resolution, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 2023-41, a resolution of the City of Deltona, Volusia County, Florida, adopting the tentative annual general fund, special revenue funds, enterprise fund, and capital project funds budgets for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2023, and ending September 30th, 2024, and providing for an effective date. Can we please vote? Motion passes seven to zero, and this closes public hearing. This time we're gonna go to section C, request approval of resolution 2023-51 and budget amendment to increase the economic development initiative account to fund the reimbursement of taxes to Amazon for the fiscal year of 2023 for a cost of $86,000, Mary. On um, December 16, 2016, the commission approved a resolution an economic development agreement between the City of Deltona and Amazon.com Services, LLC. Amazon 
invested approximately $122 million in construction and equipment of a warehouse, which resulted in new job creation. The agreement has provided for ad valorem reimbursement for both real and tangible property taxes to the, comp um, to the company over a period of five years, not to exceed an amount of $3 million. So um, as of December 31st, 2022, Amazon has reported 1,631 jobs at the project site with an average wage of $33,850. The estimate cost for benefits as a percentage of the average wage is 17%. Amazon has provided community services activities as required in the economic development agreement and has paid $812,265.81 in real and tangible property taxes for the 2020, for just, um, 2022. Um, the funds that we budgeted for Amazon were based on historical value, as well as um, we do an incremental increase based on our projection of what the assessed value would um, increase. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Volusia County property appraiser has increased the assess taxable assessed value by 16%, um, and we budgeted um, a shortfall of 86000 So the amendment I'm bringing for you today is to move $86,000 from general fund so we may reimburse Amazon for um, the taxes that they paid to the city of Deltona. Um, the, the maximum amount is $3 million. We're over the halfway point. It's either three million or five years. Um, I anticipate that we will be fully paid to Amazon in four years, and every tax dollar that is generated will remain with the city of Deltona. Commissioner Jody Lee. Thank you, Mayor. Vice Mayor Bradford. So I know some people will be like, oh, oh my God, but this is actually great news, right? So basically what it's saying is Amazon's taxes are higher, which means once we hit the $3 million, right. that money is all coming to us from there on out, right? right? Let the value keep going up. So that's great. Um, how many jobs did they tell us they were going to have, like 12 to 1,500, 1,200? Um, uh, well, actually, it's 1,631 jobs. 1,631? Uh, yeah, what was in the original contract, I, I, I don't really know. it was really like 12, 1,500, 1, Yeah, 1, they far exceeded the number of jobs that they um, <coughs> were, were um, obligated to bring to the city. Then and these funds will, okay. Well, I'm excited to see when these funds all start coming to us. So thank you for the great update. Okay. Do you have any public comment? Mayor, we have two public comments, Adam Vasquez and Elizabeth Chavez. Adam Vasquez, please. Oh, and I apologize, Brandy White then. Good evening, Adam Vasquez, District 3. Um, I've never really been for the Amazon tax breaks, uh, and I'm not tonight. Um, so it turns out, you know, I've been collaborating with folks in the community. It turns out because Deltona lacks um, affordable daycare, uh, especially daycare that's 24 hours a day that's consistent with um, Amazon's business model that actually most of their workers are not Deltona residents. Um, so they come in from other places. Also, um, Normandy Boulevard um, is a city owned street. Um, we are doing a construction project down there. I'm, I'm sure due to the capacity issues. I mean, we didn't get it from the developer from the apartments. So I'm not sure how we're paying for those improvements. It's needed. Um, there's more trucks, and then if, if, the, if the workers are actually coming in from out of Deltona, they're using the same streets that we didn't take the $10 million from the um, developer. So I am totally against taking $86,000 from our general fund to give it back to Amazon. I think they have enough money. They probably don't pay their workers a fair wage. And um, if, we, if, we want, if we want to actually employ our, our citizens and keep them in Deltona, we need to bring the services that they need. You know, when, they, when a young person has a child, they need child care. And, um, um, you know, because we lack all of those services and we, we don't want to grow up as a city, right? That's why we can't spur this economic development. Uh, maybe we should collaborate with other agencies um, that, you know, make decisions based on data and not keep in our, our area the way that it was designed to be 40 years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Chavez, please. Ah. 
Charles, the Chavez del Tona, um, he just actually said a lot of the things I was gonna say. Um, I remember I was in a committee with um, uh, development, it got sunsetted. And that gentleman let us know. Ms. Chavez, can you speak a little bit louder? We're having a hard time hearing you, sorry. I yell so much at home, I don't know why that I don't speak louder here. There you go, thank you. But the gentleman was explaining to us then that the contract with Amazon, the reason why they took it did not include, it did not include giving jobs to Deltonians. So those jobs, that's great and wonderful, but it's, it's not from Deltona. So I, I don't know where is the life-saving element to taking out $86,000 from our general fund for this. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy White, please. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Okay, Brandy White Deltona. After all I heard the last, I don't know, five seconds that I was warming my seat about, oh, poor us, we gotta make sure we get our trash picked up. And the fear mongering of the services being cut and how we just can't squeeze another penny out of our budget but then this is on our agenda, so I find that very comical. Um, that one million sure would come in handy this year, wouldn't it? Um, I just wanna know, is this commission in agreement to not ever do this asinine shit again? Because that is ridiculous. To devalue Deltona so much that we feel we have to beg a billion dollar company to come build on prime real estate in a prime area near I-4, that was a joke. They wanted that property. They wanted to come here long before we offered them all these freebies. And I believe there's some documentations that show that. So I'm just wanting to make sure this commission's all in agreement that we probably should never do something so stupid again because it's costing us a good three million on our backs. I'd also like to talk about the statistics of new jobs, because if there's one thing I love, it's statistics. And I'm gonna have to degree, uh, disagree with those facts. I think that needs to be broken down a little more. Um, I know for a fact, a large portion of those jobs are not new jobs technically, because they were transferred in from other agencies, opening up job opportunities in other places. So with that said, I'm out of time, thanks. Stephanie Cox, please. Stephanie Cox, Deltona, Florida, 1526 Agatha. You know, if, if I did a shortfall of my budget, I would be in debt to the IRS for the next 10 years. And we were talking earlier about digging into savings accounts. Who in the world has a savings account? I lost all my assets to the ex-husband, but Regardless of that, you all need to pay attention and figure out what the heck is going on here. And I have better words to say, but I'm just going to say you better take a good look and make some quick changes because there's been some really bad decisions made, and I've sat back too long watching them. I'm tired of it. Be smarter. Thank you. Thank you, Richard Bellick, please. Brandy Wright, Brandy White is right. That was the Brinks job they pulled off Amazon. And when it started, there was no 1,500. It started out as 500 workers for people that lived in Deltona. That's the way it was. Not people from other cities, not all over here. I don't know what she's thinking of. And that fear mongering has got to stop. It's got to stop. Every time, you've got to throw fear mongering. Oh, this is going to happen. The street light's going to fall on you. Come on. This is the same game. Now, five years ago, they, they hoodwinked Deltona. <clears throat> they actually stole that position. They told, I distinctly remember, 500 jobs for people that live in Deltona. And if anybody thinks there's 1,600 workers up there now, that's about 530 workers a shift, and that ain't happening. That is not happening. 
Amazon has Deltona by the cannolis, and they squeeze it, and we don't have the people capable enough of fighting back. We got a bunch of people that'll give us 20-minute answers for simple questions. They'll go on and on and on, and the city goes nowhere. It goes down. Look at it. You got a couple of new roads fixed. I, th I believe they came on to John Peters, no? They were all his projects, aren't they? Mr. City Manager, am I right? They were all, they were all put together by John Peters. Mr. Bellick, he got fired. the dais, please. <laughs> That's good, May. John Peters, for being a good guy, got Thank fired. You. Mayor, this ends public comment. Vice Mayor Bradford, then Commissioner Jody Lee. So addressing a couple things that came up, the City Commission put together an incentive package prior to Amazon even coming here. I think at the time, if anybody would have known that an incentive package would have attracted a giant, then it probably wouldn't have been a lucrative. Once the package is put together and done, you can't take it away and say, oh, this company came, so now I'm gonna take it away. You know, so the, the job was to attract businesses, and little did we know it would attract an Amazon. Um, the 86,000 that we're paying, we can't say no, we're not paying it. You know, so there is a percentage, this is part of the agreement. What it does is, is it lessens the time that it takes us. So <laughs> this isn't going to continue, as finance was discussing, for the five years. But what it does is they have a cap of $3 million. So that means is once we hit that cap, we're paid off earlier. That means after that, those tax dollars are ours. We no longer have to pay that. So it's not gonna be five years, what's the max, five years of this. It's going to be, this is three million, that's it. So yes, it does stink, but at the same time, it also means that that's 86,000 more dollars in a few years that we're gonna have back in the city's pockets for taxes. You know, so did, it, did we make a motion? No. You still gonna talk? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Commissioner Jerry Lee. Well, on this, this whole ordeal, this Amazon thing, of course, there's a lot of us up here that weren't elected at times. Some were, some weren't. And whether it's, I agree with it or not, it's a done deal. Unfortunately, I went to outside, I went out to outside council and seen if there's a way we can stop this. There's not. This is the deal we made. Now, we need to, as a city, get somebody in our city to hold them responsible to make sure we have the jobs that they said we're supposed to because we were guaranteed so many jobs the people that live in this city they were that's what we were going to have that that was in the original discussion it was in a newspaper everything about no, it was not. they said they were going to hire people from this area but they, it wasn't they, a contract well maybe not in a contract but that's what they told us now if they blew smoke up it i hope we heed this warning for next time I just hope it doesn't it doesn't happen again something like this I understand the tax money I get it everybody's different I'm not saying it's one person's fault my fault their fault your fault it, it, they came they brought jobs they're gonna bring money we're gonna get our tax money back unfortunately we're having tax issues and we have a shortfall and it'd be nice not to give them the money but right now as it stands we have no choice so on that note I'd like to make a motion to approve the Move to approve the resolution 2023-51 in budget amendment to increase the economic development initiative account to fund the reimbursement of taxes to Amazon. For Go ahead, I'm sorry. Reimburse, reimburse the taxes to Amazon to, for the fiscal year of 2023 at a cost of 86,000. The interim city manager had authority to make corrections, scrivener's errors and the like. There's a motion by Commissioner Jody Lee. Second. Second by Vice Mayor. Motion passes six to one. We're gonna move forward to appointment of members to the city manager selection committee. Joyce. Yes, please. Could we do it by, uh, just do it by the, each district to make it quicker, yes. <clears throat> I'll be last.
Commissioner Burbank. Uh, Chris Burbank. Chris Burbank. Could, can I ask for a correction really quick, if, if you don't mind? Did, did we not discuss that no form? Because I had another commissioner, former commissioner, want to apply, and I specifically told them that we had agreed that we were not going to have former commissioners on the committee. I don't think we've ever got to the whole heart of it, Mayor. That was a Joyce question. Did we ever have a consensus on? We didn't vote or nothing. Okay, please continue. Okay, so District 2, Vice Mayor Bradford. Kathy Bryan, Tara D'Arico. Tara D'Arico, sorry, Tara. Okay, District, District 3, Avila Vasquez. Rachel Amoroso and Edwin Lasanta. District 4, Commissioner McCool. Troy Shimkus and Terry Haynes. Who did Marissa pick? District 5, Commissioner Colwell. Frank DeLisa and Carolyn Hickson, Hickerson. District 6, Commissioner For, Jody Lee. Who did Clarification, pick? Jody Lee wants to know. Who did Marissa miss? Commissioner Mer who did you pick, Marissa? I pick Rachel Amoroso and Edwin Lasanta. Okay. And I want to pick Davison Harat and Jeffrey Fix. Okay, and Mayor Avila. Uh, Larry French. And Emma Santiago. All right. At this time, we're going to move forward to appointment of staff to the city. Can we make a motion? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is there a motion? Mary, make a motion to approve the selected candidates as proposed by the commission and mayor. Second. There's a motion by Vice Mayor Bradford, a second by Commissioner Jody Lee. Vice Mayor. <laughs> Motion passes seven to zero. The second part. Yep. We're going to go ahead now and move to appointment of appointment of staff to the city manager review committee. Joyce, you want to read the names, Wait. please? Uh, Miss Iron. This, I understand that we're do, we're doing this with the staff. This is going to put a lot of people in a very awkward position, and I don't think we should do staff. Because if, I hate, I don't want to use names, I'm not have to. If Miss Phyllis picks one person, and then Mark picks someone different, and one person gets selected, that one person's going to have, I mean, not everybody can just bite their tongue and leave things alone. I think it's a very bad idea. I don't care if they help with talking to people in there. I think it's a bad idea to get staff mixed up in this. It, I just think it's a very I, bad idea. I am going to differ from that opinion. There's nothing stopping staff from doing their, their suggestions anonymously. Staff actually has to sit here and work with the city manager. Literally, they spend more time with that city manager than they do with their families. You're, you're right, but so, on that same note, if one person in staff picks this person and this department head doesn't, it's anonymous. Why would they find out? How is it going to be anonymous? It can be made anonymous. There's ways to do it. There's yeah, there's well, nothing anonymous in this area. Uh, 
I'd like, if anybody want, don't care, I, I'll make a, get a consent so we don't involve, the staff can talk to people all they want, but I don't think we should set up a panel of staff employees. I think it's a very bad idea. I mean, they all have to work with them, but I don't want a new city manager coming in having a bad taste in her mouth over one particular person. The I majority of her staff are also residents of Deltona. We are disenfranchising our employees. That's also letting them pick someone they like compared to someone else in a different department they don't like. What's the difference between the commissioners doing the same thing? I can we argue that all We don't have to worry about being fired. They do. They're feeding their family on the money they make. If you feed your family on the money you make being a commissioner or mayor, <laughs> by all means, you guys don't eat well. They pay their bills with the money they make. In this. They have jobs. They have careers. Some of them have 20, 25 years in the city. I just, I just think it's a bad idea to put them in that position. I, that's that, that that would be like, let's getting all the fire departments on the thing to, to vote for the, the fire unions contract. It makes, I mean, it doesn't make no sense. I mean, you you don't want to put them in there in that position to. It just it just it leave a, it could possibly leave a bad taste. We should and, have then not voted the way we did then. Everybody gave well, consensus to that. No, I was arguing it that night. If you go back and watch the meeting, I didn't. I don't like the idea of city employees being involved in it because, simply because they have to work with them. I get it, but it, I think it's going to put some city employees in a bad spot. I just that's just my opinion. I mean, we, we go around and see if we get a consensus on it, but I, I think it's a bad idea. They can help with the interview or talk to commissioners if they live in the city. Then somebody up there is one of their commissioners. Also, they can come talk to their commissioner just like they could anybody else in the city. Are we on the board? I just, I mean, if y'all want it, that's fine. But I'm just saying I think it's a bad idea. Vi Vice Mayor Bradford, then Commissioner McCool, then Commissioner Burbank. I believe, and maybe I'm dreaming, we received an email as well. And um, I, I guess my, con I wasn't thinking of it until you know, the opinion came across of the same, that we are putting staff in a very bad situation, choosing their boss, because if that person they chose is not nominated or that person they chose is not nominated, how is that gonna be? Is it gonna be uncomfortable, you know? And I hadn't looked at it that way, I was just looking at getting staff's input. What I want to make sure that we have is staff having an opportunity to meet these individuals and be a part of the interview process, but maybe not a part of the selection committee. Um, because my first was the same. Let's, let's get them on the board. You know, do we need to have somebody oversight? I, you know, possibly, but I just think asking staff, like it, if you talk to staff right now, they're already frazzled, they're already, not knowing the uncertainty of who's my boss, who's this. Like, Glenn's great, don't get me wrong, but there's still who's going to be taking his place. And it's, it's a lot for staff right now. I mean, they're holding it together, they're doing a great job, they're running things. Obviously, things are still happening. But I think to put them in that situation is too much. I just wanna make sure part of the process, like I said, is it is imperative they have a chance to have a group meeting with them. I don't care if it's, we do something down at the center where it's big enough for everybody to meet and, and have a stop department head meeting and let them ask questions, you know, cause I hear it already. Please make sure you get somebody that's experienced in this. Oh my God, please make sure you get somebody that's experiment that understands this and understands this in my department. And because a city manager they have to be very well versed in all departments, not just one, all departments. And if a city manager's not, that department is going to suffer one way or the other, okay? We're talking about the budget process. Let's talk about that. So everybody's really concerned that the prior city manager wasn't maybe versed in budget process. And this is what's up in arms. So if we don't bring in and let them talk about their departments, you know, every department's gonna have something new that they're gonna ask them about and that they're gonna have concerns about. And I, I just, I know we, we said we wanted to do it, but I'm kind of changing my mind on this one.
Commissioner McCool, then Commissioner Burbank. Thank you very much. I believe that that night also that the, uh, the city manager from DeBerry suggested against it as it would be taxing on the employees and um, talked about that um, because we discussed them being a part of the vetting process also. Even that was taxing and they need to be left alone to do what they do. If somebody wants to stuff a, a recommendation or a ballot box with their anonymous choices, so be it, and feedback. But we're putting them in a precarious position to choose their boss, and that is not their job. So my question is, we have a competent uh, interim city manager that I'm going to put on the spot and ask him what his recommendation or what his thoughts on this was also. With all due respect, Commissioner, Mayor, Vice Mayor, I would like to hear the rest of the Commission's comments before you ask sure. me if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Thank I you. I, <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm, here's the thing. I want feedback in every single form that it comes in with every person because this is too important not to. However, we are putting them in a precarious position as we talked about. It is not that there will not be solicited feedback. Um, or that feedback could be provided from that. But we've never done uh, that before as far as choosing your boss. I mean, that's just, I, I just don't support that. I support residents because this is the person running their city, but this is a staff, this is a, the, the head of staffing, right? And we're asking staffing who you're gonna put in charge of the hen house. And I really don't believe that is prudent for us at this juncture um, to, to do that. Commissioner Burbank, and then Commissioner Villavasquez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what Mr. Storoso said, thank you. Commissioner Villavasquez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, everybody has um, the right to their opinion, and um, I don't have a problem with staff participating in this. Everyone on this list are the directors of the department. They're not um, the regular staff. They're all directors. Um, I was going to ask our interim city manager the same question that uh, Commissioner McCool asked him. How does he feel about it? Um, and to me, it would be his decision to decide, not us, because those are his staff. How he feels about having his staff involved and giving their opinion on, you know, on the person that are coming for interviews and stuff like that. So. I'll leave it up to the uh, interim city manager to decide. So I, I, let me, before you give your recommendation, I do want to say one or two things. So <clears throat> this is something that, as Commissioner McCool, at least that I know of, has never been tried, which is one of the reasons why I think it works. But I just want to bring a quick example of how we can all act like adults. Respectfully, Ms. Siegel, George, did I vote for you or have you in my top three when we did the attorney selection? No. I was the only one on this dais that did not have you on my top three list, right? I didn't vote for you. One of two that didn't vote for you. Has that working relationship been awkward between you and I? Have I not approached you? Have you felt any negativity between our discussions? Okay. Every single person I see on this list probably a lot more mature than I am. I'll tell you that. A lot more smarter than I am as well. I say that very humbly. At the end of the day, <clears throat> we're going to do whatever the dais wants as a whole because this is a, a, a commission. So, Mr. Whitcomb, please. If I may, um, I know that the city manager from DeBerry and I have met and discussed these these various issues, this various thing. And um, he did state in the last meeting that he thought it would put the staff in a precarious position. Um, I do agree with that. Um, however, this is the decision of the commission, whatever y'all would like us to do. I was asked to provide a list of uh, employees for, an, uh, uh, um, for the committee and we did so. Um, so it's, it's in my mind, it's up to the commission of whatever y'all would like to do. Thank you, Mr. Wickham. Vice Mayor Bradford? Just going to throw it out there. Yeah. I make a motion 
to not name and to not nominate. I, I believe we. I don't know how to put it. I, I believe we need somebody. Um, City-wise, that would be going back and forth and communicating. Um, I don't know if we want to make that the city manager who we want to do, but um, you know, I would be even be okay to see if Chief Snyder would be okay with doing it. He's been around, you know. When I look at this list for quite a long time, um, I'm trying to look at like who's, and I'm not trying to throw people out there, but who's our this? I don't even know how to say it because if I say it, it's going to be flipped around on me. Like who's our oldest? A, who's the longest? Yeah, like who's been around the longest? Is it Chief Snyder? Or who has the skill set? Or Joyce? So what what I want is somebody on there that can can help guide the community, work with the not guide them, but work with them. Um, if they need answers to something, maybe then that person can be a liaison between them and us or them and the city manager. So I'm looking at maybe having more of a liaison working with them, with all of us. Um, so I don't know, I'll let y'all, I guess let them choose that, but I would, I would say just one person rather than all of these. Um, so I just wanna make a motion to have one staff representative as a liaison for this committee. I'd, I'd second, but I'd like to amend it a little bit and just say leave it up to the acting city manager. And leave it up to the acting city manager. That way it's on nobody choice. else. Right. Right. So, so can you make your motion correctly? So with I make a motion to accept one staff recommendation by our acting city manager as a liaison between the committee and staff in the commission. So Sorry. motion by Vice Mayor Bradford, second by Commissioner Jody Lee. Is there any public comment? And Mayor, there are two public comments, Richard Bellick, then Elizabeth Chavez. Richard Bellick, please. <coughs> this doesn't seem like it's going too well. It seems like there's a lot, a lot of friction up there. And uh, as far as who's been around the longest, that's Commissioner Bradford. She'd been here for five city managers. She picked five and fired five. I mean, she should recluse herself. She shouldn't be involved in this. Let's be fair here. Five, five out of five. Five came, five gone, she voted them in, and then she voted them out. Come on, she shouldn't be involved in this. You know that. This is only fair play. Come on. This is, this is like putting a, 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 a kindergarten kid in the major leagues playing baseball. Come on. This, this, she, 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 has, she has got to stop this fear-mongering. Every sentence is out of her is fear. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. She is the problem. Five for five. All five are gone. How much money did that cost the city? Millions. Nobody says nothing about it. She makes like, oh, nothing happened. Five for five. That's a terrible record. Come on. You ever shoot pool? Thank you, you Mr. keep Bellic. trying longer, you I might get a ball power. in the hole. Thank you. This is crazy. Five for five, but Thanks. yet she's not honorable enough to Mr. recuse Bellic, herself. No personal attacks, please. Thank you, Elizabeth Chavez, please. Elizabeth Chavez, Algonquin Avenue, Deltona. I know that you guys have a lot of decisions that you have to make. And, and I, know, I know that you guys have a lot of decisions that you have to make, that um, a lot of times you get like, you know, you know, comments and stuff like that. So I just wanna say, I just wanna say first and foremost that I pray for my city. I pray for the residents of my city. I pray for each one of you as well. Um, and I love it when Jody Lee speaks because he talks the truth, he says, things and he reveals things. That's the transparency we want. When we have something like staff coming in, uh, the liaison, is it gonna be the head of HR? That's my question, because that, that, that should who be you know, in there um, maybe doing that. And, and if they do, if you do it with a lot of staff, you're saying that they're gonna volunteer their time or are they gonna get paid for that? Or are they gonna get, um, you know, overtime because the 
residents that you just picked, they're doing it voluntarily. Thank you, Mayor. This ends public comment. Can we please go for a vote? Can we vote yes for the revised? Yeah, yes. motion to accept it. And that amendment passes five to two. We're gonna go ahead and move to city manager comments. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple of things, um, you know, <clears throat> we had a resignation of a very important person um, downstairs in planning and development, Mr. Ruiz. Um, so what I wanted to let you all know is I'm looking at um, you know, we've advertised the position. We've only had one or two applicants. Um, and what I am looking at doing, um, we'll be bringing it back to you, the next commission meeting, is um, having a contractor consultant uh, fill in in that department for the director position so that we can keep these projects moving forward. Because the idea is to keep the city moving forward. That's the reason I'm here. Um, and to keep projects moving. So I need help in doing that at this point until we can get some help. It would not be permanent, it's just temporary until we can get some replacements in. The next thing is um, the we have a executive session on Monday, May the 11th um, at four o'clock. I'm looking at Joyce, I'm pretty sure it's four o'clock. September okay, yeah. 11th, you yeah, said? September. We went, September. We went to May for you said real May. Quick. It's September 11th. I yeah. Next Monday. You don't skip a lot of months. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. job's already getting to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, after that, we will be having the, um, you know, a, a workshop on the city manager search at 5:30, following that executive session. So just that's the only thing I have. Thank First you. Me. Before we adjourn, I just like to recognize that our county councilman has made yet another appearance here at our city commission meeting. So the county is paying attention. So thank you. Meetings adjourned.